The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, into the breach do we go, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, it is a bloodbath, uh, a variety of bad news from earnings to a political uh, food fight that looks like it's going to last at least a year, if not longer. Uh, we'll cover that. Uh, is as unbiased as I can, but uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my history and also maybe some other history out here, political history, how it applies to what's going on in the near future um, and why the market's kind of acting like it is, I suspect, to help it better. I wish I would have foreseen uh, a little bit more of this, but uh, I think I'll be okay. I'm not going to go home and cry too much tonight. I had a very good week earlier. Uh, I've closed out uh, another one of our gene editing stocks in the Tech Insider for 70%. So was pretty happy about that, eh, around 70%. I haven't figured that out. Probably ought to. Um, still looking at some of the other ones. Uh, most of these uh, indexes are incredibly uh, oversold. And, I, man, you could get a huge rip out of this. I was hoping to get that rip last day or two to get up something like 2850. And if on light volume, that was where I was going to get it. This looks like it's going to be much bigger than we looked at. Uh, it started off kind of this week with uh, Tuesday and didn't look a lot like the infrastructure bill was going to get any support. Uh, started the market started to move. Um, earnings uh, kind of hit and miss. Uh, then we saw kind of the the thing that really kind of broke the back. Well, there were two things. They almost happened at the same time, so it's hard to tell which one had the most effect. I think both of them did. Deutsche Bank came out with some pretty horrible earnings, and uh, all of Europe flushed uh, collectively at once their toilets. And we always wonder what that would be like. Uh, you hear those stories every year around the Super Bowl that everybody, yeah, the, the, uh, that it's, uh, it's almost like Armageddon at the waste treatment plant at uh, halftime. Uh, you always wonder if those stories are true. Maybe I'll make a movie out of that. Be kind of a low-budget movie, I suspect. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, moving back and forth. And the question is whether or not these political issues will go away. I don't think they will, and I'll tell you why. In my experience, in a grand jury, federal grand jury, uh, for several years, and uh, what I witnessed uh, in those, I think I've brought it up a few times before, uh, and what we've had in the way of history. Um, right now, uh, off 41 points on the S&P cash, we solidly bro broke uh, 2,800. I thought that would hold. It did not. I was trying to and uh, thinking about buying some calls around noon when this should have uh, kind of dissipated. Uh, the memo came out, and, man, we dropped another 125, 130 points in a matter of minutes when everybody saw what was in it, uh, the political uh, memo. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is. But it's mostly that it doesn't look like there's going to be a quick answer to discord on any of the issues coming forward. And basically, you're probably not going to get um, any kind of immigration reform, which means you're not going to get any kind of long-term infrastructure spending and therefore maybe uh, 
inflation's not going to be what everybody thought it was. So the ripple effect just keeps coming through the system. Uh, but uh, there's uh, some winners and some losers out here today. And uh, eh, I can live with what happened today. Uh, I would keep thinking that there is some kind of bottom out here. But we shall see. Maybe it happens on Monday. The problem is that I think a lot of people are seeing this discord and looking on to February the 8th, which I thought this market would kind of rally into the first or second or third and then uh, fall on no budget deal next week, which I still suspect is a high probability. So there may not be any easy answers in the next week or so for this market. Uh, all kind of uh, circling around the whole uh, political issue because it's getting hotter not colder in Washington, D.C. We'll talk about a few of these things. Um, I don't have a slide for it today, uh, but uh, I think we can pretty much illustrate uh, what happened by doing a little bit of history. And we'll go back to the 2004 election. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, and not on this day. But in the uh, fall of 2000, uh, uh, the fall of the 2004 presidential election, uh, the head of CBS News decides to, Dan Rather, decides to run with a story. That story is a document that he has that proves that uh, Bush should not be reelected. Uh, there is a problem with this, though. That is that he got this document from somebody that passionately hates the then president. Uh, he takes his document back and uh, asks uh, the Standard uh, Practices Bureau in his uh, system to uh, take a look at the document and give it a uh, blessing of approval as being uh, accurate. He gets a phone call back from the guy going, uh, you really want me to go through and spend the money on this? Because it's not. Uh, he says, no, just send it back to me. Uh, goes ahead and runs with the story that this document proves how a worthless a scoundrel that uh, George Bush, uh, actually, uh, his son is, uh, and should not be run. Well, within two hours, a new thing called the Internet starts looking at this document and figures out fairly quickly that this document is not worth the paper it's printed on because guess what? The typeface that they used on this document didn't exist before uh, Word 2001. Uh, there is spacing between the letters. There's a bunch of other things. Uh, and it was also printed on a, uh, on a printer that did not exist in the 70s when this document was supposed to have been made. So we knew the document was phony. And Dan Rather decided to go on and do it anyway. There was a long investigation. And guess what? He got fired. Well, what we have is kind of the exact same thing, except now we have the FBI. We decided to go with a fake document. They knew it was fake. They did not tell judges. And uh, it's going to be a food fight for the rest of the year politically. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Anyway, I said I was going to go back through a little bit of history because there's, I don't think, well, we'll look at some charts here, but I don't think there's a whole lot to scream about this. I think right now I'm looking at the bigger picture and whether or not uh, anybody's going to join hands and sing Kumbaya anytime in the near future. I suspect this document uh, says no, and maybe this is why we're going to have the giant pullback we're all talking about. We'll have to see how it develops. But I, I at least we kind of know what's going to happen now. Uh, I spent uh, two years on a federal grand jury, uh, and one of the interesting things about it was uh, wouldn't uh, I found out fairly quick that the FBI wasn't always telling the truth. Uh, one interesting thing was uh, they brought an agent in front of us uh, who uh, said one thing, and then a couple of weeks later, uh, well. The same FBI came, guy came in front of us, refused to answer any questions. Uh, the next witness came back, and it was the accused in a case that this guy was involved with. Uh, he had documented exactly what this guy had said. But, of course, the FBI never used tape, so no one could argue with it. Well, this guy was smart enough to get it down on tape. He played the tape for us, and it had nothing to do, and he admitted nothing uh, like the FBI agent said. FBI agents like uh, police, uh, police and firemen, not everybody's a hero. And uh, this guy was, uh, this, this particular FBI guy was lying through his teeth. Never found out exactly what happened to him. Generally, they try to sweep this stuff under the rug as soon as possible. Uh, but... Uh, what we do know uh, and why this thing's going to be so explosive and a lot more than I thought it ever would be uh, is that it shows that it, uh, at least eight um, FBI uh, top agents uh, have the ability to go to jail for uh, at least six years. Uh, that's because they lied to a judge <laughs> three different times about the origin of the documents that they got a warrant with. Uh, they all 
basically have put together uh, the emails and text and show that uh, they knew exactly that uh, during the campaign, well, one campaign gave some money to their lawyers against the law. That money from the lawyers went to a company that uh, in England that works on uh, coming up with uh, competitive data to use against com uh, your your uh, uh, foe in political elections. Those guys gave money to yet another guy. This guy was a uh, uh, MI6 agent that got kind of booted out because he was half communist. Uh, and, of course, uh, we've got wonderful texts on there that, that said that they would do, he would literally do anything it took to make sure that uh, Trump didn't become president. So they gave him a bunch of, of cash. Uh, the FBI started using this guy, did not tell the judge uh, of his uh, axe to grind, much like the uh, 2004 election. Uh, no one wanted to know where the source of this data came from. But uh, guess what? <laughs> That's what you got to tell the judge. You got to tell him if uh, this guy's got an ax to grind, if he's got a, a financial benefit. This guy had both. So where did the whole fly in the ointment came from? Uh, come from in this, and why do we know about it now? This guy started shooting off his mouth that he was working uh, for everybody because he wanted more business, and the FBI quickly fired him. And he was a little unhappy, and he started spouting off a little bit more. So slowly, the whole thing's going to start to unravel. On Monday, we saw one of the FBI guys leave. Uh, if you read the reporting, there were a ton of FBI agents willing <laughs> then, and then to actually come up and admit that uh, this gentleman that left on Monday asked him to alter documents. That's obstruction of justice. Like I said, this uh, kind of really smacks of uh, Watergate, where you're going to start pulling this thing apart. And the question is, just how far does it go? The document today says that it goes at least to Comey and the uh, then uh, Attorney General uh, did know uh, that this document wasn't worth the paper it was printed on, and they got a federal warrant to bug uh, a, a campaign. Uh, they also know that uh, they bugged one guy to begin with, didn't get anything, and instantly uh, moved the warrant up and told uh, the judge that uh, things were going well. Uh, that was a lie. So again, like I said, uh, they went to the well three times. Uh, there's at least eight FBI agents uh, and uh, with political risk. Uh, the question is, do they roll over? on Comey? Do they roll over on uh, the then uh, Attorney General uh, and other things? And that's why everybody is in such a titter today. This can go and go and go. Um, how far does it go? You never know. Uh, will somebody fall on the sword? Uh, does it go higher? Or was it just a bunch of morons, kind of like the uh, plumbers group around uh, Nixon? But what I'm going to tell you is, there's not just fire. Uh, uh, this is a burning, burning bush. And we're going to probably have a political discourse that is all about who knew what, when. And, uh, of course, uh, since they control the Congress, they're uh, probably going to drag it through the entire election process through this fall. Uh, and why does this matter? Well, it's more as a trader point of view. It matters because guess what? If they're not doing anything, and if they're at each uh, other's throats with knives, which they already are, uh, do we get a budget passed uh, or even a temporary budget passed next Thursday? And do we ever get an infrastructure bill passed with that level of discord? Uh, something's going to radically have to change uh, to see that. I think the market is now kind of looking at that as the uh, foregone conclusion. Um, well, I, somebody in the den is asking me one thing. I'll tell you that there have been a lot of uh, special counsels uh, appointed for a whole, whole lot less than this, and I suspect that uh, the retirement of one of the congressmen earlier this week uh, is the prelude to him becoming either the new attorney general 
uh, or a special prosecutor to go clean up the swamp. Um, and all you got to do is if you Google it, you can see all the emails between these FBI agents. Uh, they talk of a plan to go after the president if he wins, uh, an insurance policy. Uh, they name names uh, in this document, and that's why I'm going to say if they're naming names, they're not shy, and they've got the goods. They don't kind of do this stuff um, on uh, – on, uh, they, they can't back up. So we're going to see a lot of uh, who shot John next week, but I don't suspect this goes away anytime soon. And uh, politics does enter into trading. Um, if someone can come up with a quick and easy way to explain how everybody comes together uh, in a few weeks and puts us all behind us, you can call me at 877-927-6648. But it looks to me like... Uh, like Animal House, a food fight, maybe through the entire election cycle this year. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And what do we have? Well, we'll take a look at reactions on some earnings and some other stocks I wanted to look at. Uh, Apple actually held up fairly well until the market started to roll over. They printed about the uh, 
about their closing price, about 167, pretty much through the night. They were down a couple of bucks, no big deal. Uh, what it was overnight, uh, not only the market moving lower, but when you start digging it across, we talked a lot uh, uh, yesterday about how I probably wouldn't have been short them going into earnings. I think probably could have shorted it at the open today, looking at how bad things were going to be. Uh, support comes in at about 158. Uh, but uh, man, if they wouldn't have had the ear pods, they would have dropped pr pretty much significantly uh, on uh, average uh, uh, on uh, margins. And everybody kind of a little spooked, I think, on that this morning. Earnings were not great. They've got uh, $288 billion, though. And the question is, when as that comes back and they buy shares back, probably not buying today, but uh, they'll probably get back there. There'll be a floor under this uh, company. It's not going broke tomorrow. I like going after stocks that have huge uh, systemic risks involved, and Apple is not one of those, although you could make a little money. I like to make a lot. Uh, so we're down, what, six, seven bucks? That still probably wouldn't have beat the uh, put mar uh, the uh, put premiums. I'd have to look at it to make sure, but my guess, they didn't. And uh, a lot of people had uh, premiums uh, for, uh, uh, or had uh, options for today's expiration based on uh, the earnings pop. So probably didn't make any money anyway on that. If you had the equity, you made uh, a few shekels, but that doesn't uh, seem to do a great deal. Uh, more interestingly is the move in XOM. Uh, this thing was uh, is absolutely hammered today. Uh, and again, a lot of these energy stocks have been kind of weak for a while. This did go and pop up last night. Uh, did so on fairly decent volume, too. Uh, opened lowers, continue to move lower like the rest of the market. Uh, you got fairly decent volume, and on a Friday, going to be a big deal. Uh, somebody in the den saying, Amazon don't care. I say Amazon is the honey badger. And uh, like you said, it's a little higher out here, not really coming undone. Uh, you have to kind of look at some of the things that they say with it tongue in cheek, but uh, there's nothing in there to say that these guys have any big problems going forward. Again, all the issues are probably going to be somewhat political and or legal, but I don't know if you can divorce the two. Uh, they continue to gobble up everything in their path. Uh, like the Borg in Star Trek, and eventually uh, these someone will slap their hands. Uh, you can go back to the uh, train uh, monopolies in the early 1900s, where the uh, basically uh, Standard Oil uh, set the margin, uh, set the bar for monopolies and monopoly actions. Uh, but uh, their trains were big in that too. Uh, actually, the people made off like bandits that were in that. Uh, but they did split up the companies uh, in those those heady train days, starting at about, what is it, about 1903 through 1907, uh, splitting up the those. Uh, my guess is that Amazon has to get split up, too. Uh, they tried splitting up Microsoft in 2000, uh, but uh, Microsoft kind of held, held on by the ch hair of their chinny-chin-chin and kept the entire company together. Uh, and it's kind of tough to see how Amazon does that, though. My guess is they're going to have to start cutting up some of it, the distribution part, the uh, shipping part. Um, pure vertical companies um, are pretty much uh, verboten, a little German lingo there, uh, on this. And the question is just when. Um, they have wisely bought their own newspaper. Uh, in Washington, D.C., so they can hammer anybody that they like incessantly. Probably not a bad move. Uh, ethically, <laughs> the question is how far that uh, dog will, uh, that uh, pony will ride down the length of that. Okay, so what else do we have happening out here? I wanted to look at a few other, and we looked at Apple. Uh, we looked at uh, that. Let's uh, take a look at Skyworks Solution, SWKS. See how some of these other 
companies are doing. I mean, this is not the, for all the blood that we're seeing in the indexes, um, there's not a lot of blood in all stocks. There's a handful of these things kind of having a really bad hair day uh, and putting uh, the weight on the rest of them. But if you look at Skyworks Solutions, uh, of course, a major supplier to Apple, uh, this is just an inside day for yesterday and on lighter, but much lighter volume so far. To, to, there's This is going to be, I think, whatever we have going on here that's uh, uh, racking the market, whether it was just it needed one more push with Deutsche Bank, uh, which, uh, uh, what is Deutsche Bank? DB. Let's take a look at this one and see how it did. This is the big gap that really kind of started the ball rolling in Europe. And uh, this thing blew through its gap. This is back at the 1750 level. Well, I remember when this thing kind of gapped up here. It seemed rather interesting to think that all the bad news was behind these guys. But you know what? Things were going fairly rosy out here. And, uh, well, that time under the sun is over. This is back into the lower trading range for Deutsche Bank with volume. And uh, I think... Uh, I mean, the stock market much thinner in Europe and kind of put the pall uh, and the dark cloud cover on everything when we started opening up and trading uh, and many other things all put together. But I'm going to say if we want to put this together along with infrastructure spending going away, uh, inflation probably coming down a little bit, um, we had kind of a perfect storm out here to move this. I did not foresee it. Um, I'm going to sit on my hands because I think that we'll probably still get kind of some kind of bounce. And if that bounces on light volume, the next move down could be horrific. Uh, but uh, we'll see what Monday brings for us. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yep. I love that saying. Hard to argue with people who buy ink by the barrel. I think I told you that. Somebody told me that like four weeks ago. Um, so uh, what else do we have? Oh, we got about a minute left. I uh, wanted to look at IBM real quick and see if any of these other companies were really doing much. I mean, if we just sat quiet, you went out into the woods somewhere, didn't read the news, didn't read about Deutsche Bank, you'd probably look at IBM and say, there's a possibility this thing is ready to make one more ABC higher. I mean, it's pulled back. I don't kind of like the energy except the one big gap down that it had on our earnings kind of came back up to that gap. It's rolled back over, but not going to have a huge volume today. Um, you could make a case that it's on the second ABC of this uh, 139.13 low. I don't think it is. I think it's headed to 155. But if you're just looking at the charts, I mean, do these things really look horrific? Some do. A lot don't. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hey, I got an email. Am I, am I in trouble here today on, uh, on, uh, the market being down. No, I don't have any index positions at all. And I've got two tech stocks that I'm long. One's a $14 stock that's down 20 cents and one's a 60 plus dollar stock that's down 20 cents. So I'm not feeling much of it. I think I'm in the right spots for these things long term, uh, unless the market decides to go down yet another 500 points on Monday, which is a, always a possibility. But I think I've got enough air under the wings uh, to sit through this. These are more longer-term ideas than short-term ideas. I've got some commodity uh, positions today that aren't doing too well, so we'll see how those close. But eh, nothing that really makes me think uh, that I should freak out today in the positions I have. I know that if you were uh, triple long the ES or something, you're probably uh, having a bad day. But um, I've been kind of tending to my knitting, which is uh, looking at individual stocks. So we'll look at a few more that I was looking at uh, coming into this morning because I thought maybe midday we'd have a bounce. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to get that. Just looks like things are going to get worse out here. What do we have? Uh, 46 on the S&P cash. Dow's off of 506. And uh, if we went back to 2014... Uh, we would have to have a 500-point move then would be a 750-point uh, move now. So 500-point move, big move in the Dow. Uh, it's like about a 380-point move, though, in 2014. So you always got to know that as the bigger numbers happen in the Dow, uh, the bigger underlying move is there. And of course, without much volatility in the recent past, uh, that's been it. So I have to do a Maya culpa. I didn't see any kind of huge move down. I thought that huge move down would come most likely next week with a government shutdown, which is probably still going to happen. And we may even get more. I'm just hoping for a few days of a good bounce to get to another short position. Uh, Alamos gold is one of the things I've been looking at. What do we have? A uh, nice little gap here at $5.50. Uh, this is coming back to it today. Not a whole lot of juice. So some of these things may be lining up. Uh, Cousins, C-U-Z, Cousins Property. Uh, these ETFs continue to kind of move lower. What was the other one? Uh, Diode. Uh, was watching some of these come back for lower uh, values to see maybe these things would be worth buying. Doesn't look bad today. Uh, D-I-O-D is this one. Gapped up on the 14th 
of December did so with 800,000 shares. Today, we're down on 111,000 shares. So certainly a day where you can separate the wheat from the chaff. Uh, bounce attempt starting now. Okay. Um, Eaglet, E-G-L-T. I like the pattern on this one. Uh, I'm going to have to find out more about it. But these are some of the stocks that have had rip-roaring moves off the bottom. Uh, just total lack of any kind of, uh, of uh, interest in selling or buying. And those are kind of the ones you want to watch out there because there's not much room to the downside. And you can make these never uh, expiring options or perpetual options if you want. But a nice pattern out there where this thing's just going sideways. FRO, which is frontline. This thing's got a massive gap that I've been waiting for it to come back and fill. This gap goes back uh, to, what is this? Let's go back and look at this. It uh, goes back to February 3rd of 2016. This thing came up on 1.6 million shares. We're now coming back and finally filling that gap. Uh, today we've got, uh, what, 700,000 shares. So... Uh, you're back to what should be somewhat uh, support for FRO, so you want to keep an eye on that one. Hormel Foods, another one that uh, has been uh, seeing this $34 line uh, as support and resistance. It's gapped over and under this thing twice at $34. Bucks. Uh, the first gap down came on October, or no, on August 24th of 2017, down on 10.6 million shares. Then gapped over that same little range uh, on the 21st of November with 6.8 million shares. So not a whole lot, but a few days later, you got some huge volume coming in. Yeah, that's 7 million shares. Up to 38 bucks, and this thing's back down to 33.69. If we're going to have a tough uh, year uh, this year. Uh, of course, uh, anything in, that you have to buy, like food, will tend to be a better buy in this marketplace because people will keep buying food no matter what. They got to eat. They may not uh, spend as much money on cable TV or internet uh, uh, streaming video, but guess what? They're going to eat. And uh, this one's uh, down in here in this gap fairly light volume, uh, you could make a case that this is a huge uh, expansion, and uh, that would get you uh, out here with a $33.69 low yesterday on a one-to-one -one ABC to four, almost 42 bucks, 41.94. So if you're looking for stuff, the volume has been light off this December 5th high, probably not affected by politics, probably not affected by interest rates. Uh, they're always a bull market out there somewhere. It may be in food if this continues for any length of time. Uh, other stocks of interest that I was looking at, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. Um, okay, what else do we have? Uh, you've got this gap that's been acting as support for Jack in the Box. And I wanted to see how this one came in today. Uh, this one gapped up on the 4th of August, did so on 3.2 million shares in Jack in the Box. My brother used to work for this Jack in the Box. Got to be late 70s. The only good thing about it was he could walk to work. Uh, other than that, it was always creepy. I think it became a Burger King after a while. Uh, down, what do you have, 640,000 shares. And, of course, that's compared to the gap up on 3.2 million shares. Again, we've been seeing, let's take a quick look at McDonald's, MCD. Uh, now, this has kind of come off its high. In fact, we're going to see how many of these things have come off their highs and whether or not we get some double repo patterns in these stocks because this is exactly – what you want to see if you think that these stocks are going to roll over, although I think that you're going to have much better opportunities than other stocks. You want this failure. You want it to kind of come back up about three-quarters of the way. Then you want it to close back below uh, the three-by-three uh, three displaced moving average. So this, let's say we get a little rally out of next week on Monday, 
uh, this thing bounces three or four bucks and there's no juice up here. And then the next close under either the three by three displaced moving average or the nine day move average generally is where the real destruction, if you think today is real destruction, um, we can look into next week and a bounce and a failed bounce into next week could be a big ABC on the way down. So we'll look at that. Anyway, uh, back in a minute. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining Mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You don't buy into that nonsense, do do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Uh, S&P's off 51, Dow's off of 551. Will we see 750? That would be kind of the... That'd be kind of the general huge one-day sell-off that we've had in the past, uh, adjusted for, we'll say, like 2014. So that would be interesting, but that's we, that would give us 200 more points. In fact, I think we were down, uh, maybe uh, uh, if I'm just from memory serves, we were down 750 Dow on, on election night. And it got to 800, and that's where the turnaround happened. I think that's correct. Maybe somebody in the den can tell me. I remember we were all uh, in the den trading. I went to bed at about two o'clock that morning, after going uh, after 
basically taking care of my short positions and buying a couple of long positions in the middle of the night. I know many other dinners did too. I think Tom O'Brien was around. Uh, we all had a jolly night. It doesn't seem like that's been over a year from uh, ago, does it? Uh, but that 750, 780 mark kind of reminds me. That's where it hit. Maybe everybody was saying, uh, yeah, ES was limit down for a moment that night. And that's where the markets turned around. Um, all the, interestingly enough, all the big fat cats that were at the election campaign uh, left when they saw the, the, the markets down so much and started buying all night until the market was about flat at the next day open. So you, these do give you kind of a great opportunity to come out and get these things. So I think maybe that if you could hold till you see the whites of their eye and this thing's down 750 on the day if it gets that bad that may be one of the more important or interesting things to see i won't be with tom o'brien i gotta go put out some flyers in the 3 30 hours so i'll see you monday same bat and same bat time you are to sell what you can you don't want to have to try to do it on a day like this be back thank you Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.